Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing all of you how you can speed up the previewing of your effects and titles inside of DaVinci Resolve 18. So to demonstrate what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and put a fusion title onto the timeline. So I'm going to go ahead and throw on the digital glitch title onto the timeline. Let's go to the start here and hit play, and you might notice that it takes a little while for it to actually play this effect because there's a lot of stuff going on. So when we go to the start from where we have the title added to the timeline and we hit play, you may notice it actually plays back a little bit slower depending on how fast your computer is. So for these kinds of effects, when you are editing and you want it to play back faster, especially the second time you go through the same clip, there's something called caching. Now there's caching on the edit and cut pages, and then there's also caching on the fusion page. So you'll find the settings for these inside of playback and then down in render cache, this is going to be caching on the edit page. So generally I would default this to smart and then fusion memory cache here is going to be for caching your effects on the fusion page. So if we put this on auto, then DaVinci Resolve will automatically figure out when or when not to cache. So as soon as we enable the first one, Fusion Memory Cache, you may notice for these effects, especially the one that we're currently hovering over, a blue bar will start to fill up. So this means that the current version of the effect has been stored in the memory of your computer and is going to play back much faster than before if we go to the start of the clip. So if I go here and I hit play, you'll see it actually just plays back smoothly because it's already in memory and it doesn't need to regenerate the effect again because it's already stored. So there is a limitation to this and that is going to be based on the specs of your machine. So if we go up to DaVinci Resolve and then Preferences, you'll notice in Memory and GPU, Resolve Memory Usage 2 and Limit Fusion Memory Cache 2. And this is going to be based off how much system memory or RAM is on your computer. So generally it's a good idea to give it as much as you can. So that's why it's defaulted all the way over here to the right. You can lower this if you need to, if for some reason there's other processes on your computer uh, that are more important for using that RAM. But if you're focused on video editing, then more is better. It's going to allow more of these effects to store in the memory at a single time. Now, before starting this video, I went ahead and created just a random particle effect on the Fusion page. So we can see it's emitting a million tiny fish particles off to the right. The reason for using fish is they take a lot more resources to render than the standard point or blob particle. So if we jump over to the Fusion page, uh, you'll see the settings for this in a particle emitter node. You can go over to the style page and the brush style particles are just going to take more resources to render each of these particles than a blob or a point. So to emphasize one more thing, which is that when you change your effects, it has to actually re-render everything. And that can be a pain, especially if you have a very complicated effect going on. So let's go ahead and take the particle emitter node. I'm gonna go to the controls and we're gonna ramp the number here way up for the number of particles that are actually being emitted. Also change the position. So let's move this over here to the left so we can see more of these particles. Let's increase the number dramatically, uh, which is obviously going to take more memory to store all of those. And on style gain, let's increase this so they're more visible. Okay, so now if we make sure that playback and then fusion memory cache is set to auto, we go to frame zero here for the effect and hit play. It's going to start to store this effect into memory, but you can see the first time it renders, it's going quite slow maybe even slower than this if we add more particles. So if I hit stop here for a second, then we should see a green bar appear. Okay, there we go. So on the fusion page, the green bar is what has already been pre-rendered. So if I go here and I hit play, that part's gonna play very fast. But as soon as we get to the part that hasn't been pre-generated, pre-rendered, uh, it's gonna slow down again. And as soon as we change one setting, it's gonna lose all of that information again. So that can be a little bit of a pain. But one thing you can do if you want to make sure that whenever you reopen a project in Resolve, that this effect that you have is going to play back as fast as possible, and you're pretty sure you have the settings where you want it, at least for the time being, is you can actually do a render in place on your effects. So what that's going to do is basically turn the effect into a video clip that will be referenced in your project, but will actually be stored as a video file on your computer or network drive. So let's go ahead and do that. On the edit page, I'm going to right click on this fusion composition and I'm gonna do a render in place. So 
Just like any other video, you need to give it a format. So quicktime.move is fine. Let's render it. So you can store this wherever you want. I'll just go ahead and create a folder for these clips. Let's select it. It's going to render in place here. So this is handy for a couple of reasons. One, whenever we play back the video clip now, it's just going to be going at full speed because this is just a video clip that exists on our timeline. So it should play back much faster than an effect that needs to generate every frame. And secondly, uh, because we're not committing so many resources to that render cache, uh, this is going to be less intensive on your computer RAM. So this is handy if you have an effect that takes a lot of computer resources and, and you just want it to play back fast every time you go through it in your timeline. Now, uh, once you have done a render in place, it's possible you would want to still edit it again. Maybe you want to make a new version. So you can right click on the clip and then do decompose to original. That's going to bring it back to what it was before, which is just a editable fusion effect. So if we go over to the fusion page, you can once again see all of your nodes and it would work just like before you made it into a video file. But the video clip still exists in your project and on the computer. So if I was to drag this onto video track two, I can uh, disable video track one. And here is the video clip version of the effect. And then if we disable that and go back to the fusion composition down here, then here is the fusion effect. And as you can see, it needs to render each of those frames. So you can just go back and forth between them as you need. But obviously, anytime you play it back as a finished video clip, it's just going to be a lot faster. So that is pretty much what you need to know about render caching inside of DaVinci Resolve 18 in order to make your effects and titles play back faster. So I've been Chris. I hope this video was helpful for all of you. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future video content.